Welcome to Blue Compass, where we're sharing insights to help your business get more out of Google Business Profile. So a lot of businesses out there focus a lot on their website, on their social media, but it's really easy to forget about Google Business Profile, which is unfortunate because there's so much that Google Business Profile, or GBP as we'll probably be calling it, can do for your organization. So with us here today, I have Danny and Kaylee, two of our digital marketing strategists here at Blue Compass, who are experts at Google Business Profile. So I wanted to ask you today, Kaylee, I'll start with you. You know, when it comes to Google Business Profile, what are some of the things that people miss when they're setting it up or optimizing? What are the important things to optimize? So I would say first and foremost, making sure that your NAP so your name, address, and phone number mm, is yeah. consistent across all digital profiles and properties that you have. So mm -hmm. your website, your Google business profile, and then any type of profile you have should all be consistent. Yeah. So this is really important both from a user perspective, just so they're not confused on what's real and what's not. But it's also super important from a Google perspective. If any of those don't align with your website, it's a major red flag to Google. Um, they can try to change those themselves, which makes it really hard for you to take control and change it back. They can even suspend your profile. So those are all things we've seen before. So super important to start there. And then just making sure that you're utilizing all of the features and functionality that Google Business Profiles has to offer. Um, using your full business description, writing who you are, who you serve, having that call to action in there, incorporating relevant keywords that you'd want to show up for in search. And then also making sure you're utilizing products and services, um, including photos, utilizing all the service areas that you actually serve, giving yourself as many opportunities as possible to show up for relevant search queries. Yeah. Well, like with so many services online, basically Google wants you to fill out everything. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of profiles where businesses might just fill out a little bit and or just do it really quickly, mm -hmm. but filling out as the most you can possibly fill out basically is the best practice. Yes, and Google is changing what they have um, for features and functionality all the time. So even if you updated it a year or two ago, go in there mm -hmm. and take a yep. look through and make sure that you're hitting all of the different areas they have to offer um, it, because it is always changing and you wanna make sure you're taking advantage of it for your business. Yeah, absolutely. Danny, what is the biggest mistake that you've seen organizations make on their Google business profile? You kind of just touched on it, which is not filling out every aspect that GBP offers to you. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, filling out your hours, making sure your address is there, your phone number, your website, your business description, but also using imagery. And they also have GBP posts where you can regularly update your profile. So making sure that you are filling everything out in its entirety. And then also going back and keeping it up to date, kind of like what Kaylee mm -hmm. mentioned, you can do that with images, creating new images and posting those, mm -hmm. keeping your posts up to date, and then also regularly responding to any reviews from customers. Mm -hmm. Those are three really simple ways that you can make sure you're keeping your GBP up to date so that you can stay at the top of search results when it's most relevant for people. Yeah. Well, just like websites, sometimes it's easy to just set it up and forget it and just leave it alone. But we see businesses do the best when they are actually active on it and updating it. And you're right, like responding to reviews and things like that, that's really important. Yeah, even just taking 15 minutes once a week to upload mm -hmm. an image or create a new mm -hmm. post or respond to a review, like something that simple and short is more than enough. Mm -hmm. Responding to both positive and negative reviews is huge. So it mm -hmm. takes two seconds to respond to a positive review. Yeah. It shows that you're active on there, that you appreciate business. Um, but responding to those negative reviews is really where you can stand out on a Google business profile. Because let's say you have one customer that had a poor experience with you. If you have a really solid response to them showing that you're trying to make it right, even though your stars might be affected on Google that you might not have a perfect five stars anymore, if you're responding to every review showing that you're making it right, someone is actually going to be more willing to go through your business for your products or services than if you're not responding to anything, you have poor reviews yeah. and it looks yeah. like you just don't care. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So Danny mentioned GBP posts. You can actually post in Google Business Profile. Kaylee, is that important? How does that work? 
Yeah. So Google business profile posts are kind of like your GBP's version of a social media post. Mm -hmm. So really important for any organic growth strategy, um, you're putting out an image, a caption, a call to action, and then a trackable link to your website. You should definitely use trackable mm -hmm. links so you can attribute that this is where it came from. And this is just a really great way for you to be able to promote your products, services, if you have any promotions or offers going on, mm -hmm. um, posting on a weekly basis is showing to Google that you're an active profile. Uh, and it's also showing users that you're active and it's giving them another opportunity to click to your website outside of that main link that you have on your profile. Yeah. What is a good example of you know, a type of post that you feel like a business should do to, you know, to put in Google business profile posts? Yeah. I feel like a great way to start is to think about the types of posts that you do for your organic social media. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those can be repurposed for Google business profiles, generally a shorter mm -hmm. caption. Um, you have to be real short, sweet to the point with it. Um, but if you have a new location opening, if you have um, a new service or product yeah. that you're really wanting to hit on, or there's a seasonal product or service that's really important, mm -hmm. those would all be great use cases mm -hmm. uh, for GDP posts. Would you say these are generally maybe a little more promotional than you would do on your social media? It's a little more, you know, directly promotional to your organization? Definitely, yes. So definitely be linking back to your website, be talking about specifically what value you are providing. Yeah. Whereas maybe on Facebook, you might do some more community features yep. and some more feel good things, employee features. This really isn't the place for that. You yeah. want these to be traffic driving posts back to your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an excuse to promote yourself. Yes, for sure. Which is nice. Yeah. Okay, Danny, product section. So there's an area where you can put products into GBP. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Should every business put products in there or services in there? Mm -hmm. Totally. Products is a place where it's kind of like posts, but it's more specifically about the actual products or services that you offer. So you can include services in there. Um, you would put in an image, you would put a description mm -hmm. of that product or service, and then that would link directly back to your website. So that's the great uh, opportunity with products as it shows up very prevalently in your GBP. You'll notice when you're setting up your GBP, there's also a services option. That's not as prevalent in your GBP. It is still relevant. If you were searching in Google Maps, you could look at services, but even though there's both options there, we definitely recommend still including services in that product section because again, it's very prevalent, it's up at the top, mm -hmm. and people can directly click, click on that link to go back to your website and learn more about that product or service. So at BC, we put our services in there. We have a couple other clients mm -hmm. who are more service-based and we still do less services in that products area. So definitely a benefit and don't let the word products <laughs> deter you mm -hmm. from putting services in there as well. And we've actually seen a lot of success for our clients utilizing products and services in tandem, mm -hmm. um, whether it makes sense for them to be, sometimes they're the same. You might have a product for a certain service of yours and a service of it, because to Danny's point, they serve different purposes within your Google business profile, both really important to use and having both is going to just give you more opportunities to show up for those relevant searches. Danny, Kaylee, thank you so much for sharing your insights. We appreciate it. And if we can help you with your digital marketing, Google business profile, your website, search engine optimization, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to give you a hand. Thanks, and we'll talk to you next time.